hello everyone. Um, so can you hopefully you can see my screen? Um, so I see that we have an overwhelming majority of uh, of respondents who actually use attributes in reporting. So that's that's excellent. I wanted to to touch on um, attributes and, and talk a little bit about them. Uh, today. So uh, what I wanted to focus on was just a couple of elements uh, on web reporting and hopefully these are these are things that you already know but if not we'll uh, we'll just uh, refresh you on them. So firstly uh, I didn't want to take too much time just kind of going through the, the basics of, of building a report but uh, I've just got a, a simple report in here which has got revenue, uh, COGS, uh, gross margin and gross margin percent and actuals and, and I wanted to talk about um, or show you how to build a report which gives you 12 months of history, which is a dynamic 12 months. Um, so uh, what I'm going to do today is, uh, I, sorry, again, I'll just talk about what we've got. So we've got revenue, uh, COGS, GAM, we've got actuals, uh, and the actuals has been moved over and tied into the parameters um, so that you can change that to, to budget should you choose. Just, um, just on that, Pete, um, your screen isn't shared. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Let me share it again. You were doing really well just describing it, though, so uh, I'll give you props for that. But uh, it does make it easier if we share the screen. Okay, no. <laughs> Can you see the screen now? Yeah, no, that's all good. Okay, excellent. Uh, apologies for that. Um, so uh, as I was as I was describing, so we've got a we've got a, a report here with revenue, cogs, gross margin. We've got the actuals and the parameter. Um, so I'll just take a step back. Um, so I'm just going to add the the 12 months in. So I've I've chosen I've gone in to choose time. Uh, now apologies, this instance has some uh, old data, so we we can't unfortunately use uh, use uh, live client data. Otherwise, that would uh, breach all kinds of uh, regulations. So uh, I'm just going to choose 12 months to bring into the report. Uh, so I'm, I'll actually I'll just bring in 2019, the 12 months in 2019. Uh, so apologies, while I through. Uh, so if I drag these 12 months in, um, now I've brought those 12 months in and the next step is very important in terms of uh, what, what I bring into the parameters. I'm going to bring in the last month into the parameters. So I'm going to bring December 19. Uh, and then I'm going to select the other 11 months and I'm going to drag those on top. Uh, so now we have 12 months, and if we look at the properties, we can see that the initial choice is December 2019. So that will give me December 2019 and the 11 months prior to that. Um, so if I apply that, um, what we can what we can do in here is we could choose. So rather than just having it set as a fixed month. Uh, Adaptive actually give us the option to choose current month or previous month. And given that we're all finance professionals, uh, we always live one month behind the rest of the world. So when when we're in June, everyone's talking about it being June, but we're still talking about reporting on the, the May actuals. Uh, so generally, we would choose the previous month. Uh, I'm not going to do that in this instance because I know that the instance that I'm looking at only has data up until March 20. Um, so if I chose previous month, it would, it would look from May 21 and then 12 months back and there was, there was no data. Um, so what I'm going to do now is to, to choose the initial month as being March 20. And you can see that's, that's moved all of those months across to, uh, to March 20. So if I'd chosen the, the previous month, we would actually have a, a dynamic 12 months report. Um, so if I, if I hit play, we will see that even though I chose the months in 2019, it, it's now moved that to March. Uh, and I've got the option to, to change that. So I'll, I'll put that into June press play, and we will see that there are no actuals for those three months. So uh, in order to create a report with, with a dynamic um, 12 month of, of actuals, uh, you would just go in and once again, just choose that option. Uh, once, you've, once you've dropped the, the latest month onto the parameters, uh, and then all the other months on top, you would just go into properties and choose uh, right up at the top, the, the relative months, so previous month, uh, current month uh, wouldn't wouldn't really give us uh, anything anything particularly useful as you would uh, as you wouldn't have your month closed out. Um, but 
what you could use is uh, if you if you wanted to put in um, budget or forecast uh, and move that out for the next six or twelve months, you could choose that as the as kind of current month as being the first month you'd like to show for your budget or forecast. You could actually have this running for twelve months of actuals and then twelve months of budget or forecast if you wanted to see that kind of uh, twenty four month view, where you could do six months actuals, six months forecast. Um, so that was the first thing I wanted to show. Um, so again, that's just a, a very simple, at the moment, I've just got 12 months of actuals. Uh, the second uh, thing that I wanted to talk about was attributes. Um, and that's why we ran the poll, just to see how many of you are using attributes. Uh, and as you'll know, as an organization grows and you, you get more complexity, you often have the, the requirement to, to report in ways that aren't uh, based on your structure. Um, so the, that, that kind of matrix organization lends itself very well to attributes. So the instance that we're using at the moment uh, is set up in a geographical um, uh, with, with all the different countries. Uh, and then underneath that, we've got some sales organization, North, South, East, and West, and the US, and some service organizations. Um, so uh, as the organization matures, uh, generally what will happen is that there will be, whilst you'll have a, a head of the US, you will also um, most likely have a, a global head of services and a global head of sales. Um, so that global head of services will want to see their um, their results. Uh, and rather than going through each time and selecting East West and US and Services Canada and Services UK, uh, a way to a way to have that uh, shortcutted and a way to um, to provide um, some standardization and, and a kind of single source of truth is to use attributes. Um, so in here we will see that in the, the level attributes for Seals North, we've got one called Seals Service. Um, and that's just got a couple of options, seal service or blank if it's, if it's neither. Um, and then we'll see that the services west is, is tagged as service. So if I just go back to a report that I've um, pre-built. So this is a, this is a, a financial year report, <clears throat> excuse me, a US financial year report for 2020. And as you can see, just three months of actuals. If I want to modify this report, I will just go in and take the pencil. Um, so now, um, and I'll just note what we have in here is a time span. So time span is very good for a, for a fixed period. Um, so at the moment, we've got a, a time span of 12 months. Um, I'll just go into that. And you can see that you've got Jan 20 to December 20. And that can be really useful for you know a report that you want to keep uh, showing the financial year. And then the next year, you can just update it. Um, so it's not dynamic like the, um, like the, the previous um, 12 months that I showed you. So time span is very good for, for something that's fixed. Um, so we would just go into level attributes. Uh, we find our sales and service. And that given that we've just got a new global head of, of service, we're going to design this report. Um, so I'm just going to pull service into the uh, filters. And then I'm just going to move it into the parameters as well. Uh, now, what we can do in here is we can we can select that we don't just want to see uh, service as an option, we want to see sales as an option as well. Uh, and we can choose what the initial choice is. Uh, now, given that we're, we're running a report that's not um, for the whole organization, it's just for, for sales or service, uh, what I would suggest doing is prompt before viewing. So that means that anyone who runs this report, uh, they will have to clearly choose whether it's a sales or service uh, report that they're running. Uh, and that should make it clear to the user that they're not running something for the whole organization. Um, so I think that prompt before viewing is, is a really important feature to use. Um, so now I've, I've added I've added that to the report. I'll press play. And before it lets me run anything, I have to choose uh, whether it seals a service. I can, of course, uh, look at all the other parameters and modify those. Um, I'll just leave those as they are, uh, running for company A for service run the report and we'll see it's a uh, very different, um, it's a very different number. So it was, it was about 11 million a month prior to that. Uh, also, it's currently sitting uh, as an AUD report, um, which probably doesn't work for the for the organization um, that has USD as their, as their global currency. So in here, again, we have um, currency as a filter. Sorry, window parameters. Uh, we have currency as a filter so in here, we've got AUD as the initial choice. If I just um, select USD and change that to be the initial choice, 
so that as a default, the user will be looking at USD. Again, if that's um, if we're giving people the choice, often we would want to prompt before viewing so that we can ensure that people are looking at the correct currency for their organization. Um, so again, I'll run this report one last time and we will see that I'm now prompted for the currency and the, um, and the attribute. I'm happy with both of those. So again, run the report and we now see that we have US dollars. So again, the, the figure is slightly lower in USD. Um, so that's what I wanted to touch on. You know, some other some other examples of, of using attributes are where you have um, organizations across multiple countries. You may have a finance team in each of those countries, and the CFO will want to know what, what the total finance costs are. So you can you can add an attribute of, of finance to that level uh, in each of the countries, and you'd probably do the same for your HR people and culture, uh, sales service. Uh, so there are a lot of uh, a lot of uses of of attributes and they're very easy to add into the reports. Uh, so the, the third thing I wanted to touch on um, was just very simply running a, a month uh, and a year to date report. And again, this is something that I'm sure a lot of you do. Um, so the current report I've got here is just showing the month. Um, so again, I'm going to modify that report. Um, so I'm going to go into time. Uh, and this has all been set up. So all I'm going to do is pull the period to date, put it in the side. Um, I'm just going to go into the properties and I'm going to, to match it to the current month um, that's showing in the report. So this is showing by day. I'll just go right up to the top. So we're looking for March 20. So I'm just going to select the month of March 20 apply and then I will drop that onto the time and that is now locked in so we've got March 20 for our results year to date and and the month so now we've got actuals of 34 million if I go through and pull April we will see that there are no actuals in April and we're still getting the, the same year to date result uh, so that's uh, another just very quick and easy way to, um, to to pull in your results in web reports. And and I think Jess actually Jess actually went a bit too early with the numbers because right at the end uh, we got a couple more votes. So we actually went 44% with uh, web reports only. Um, so it's 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 a very quick and easy way to uh, to get a report out. Um, and hopefully those are those are a couple of things that will that will help you just um, create better reports. So just to recap, we ran through uh, running a dynamic 12 month um, report, uh, which will just use the, the previous month and then it will take the time that you run it. And so you can you can always have that uh, rolling 12 months. Um, the, the second report, we were just looking at adding attributes, um, and we also looked at the time span, which is really useful for just running a, a financial year uh, report as in a, a fixed time span that you don't want to, to modify very often. Uh, and then finally, just looking at uh, month to date and year to date. Uh, so that was really all I wanted to cover today. Um, so with that, oh, so I've had a question about putting in traffic lights and Troy is now typing an answer. Excellent. So do you have to answer that on the spot, Peter? Uh, no, I'm happy. I'm happy for Troy to uh, to to give us the uh, the best answer. Okay, well we do have another one while Troy is answering that question. Um, first of all, thank you for your presentation. Um, but one of the questions we did have was um, <coughs> Oh, I've lost it now. Um, how how do we update or can we update attributes in bulk? Uh, attributes, absolutely. So um, so again, if we just go back to the level administration, um, if you if you use the this generate principle view, this will give us uh, an Excel file uh, which will open up. And I've already shared my my window, so it won't it won't show you the file that opens up. Um, but that Excel file will, will give you the current um, structure. Uh, so apologies, I will try and share. Uh, so I'll just share this. Uh, 
Um, so if we go across here, we will see that this sales service column I, so that's the attribute. So effectively what we can do is go in here, modify this file in Excel, uh, save it and re-upload it into, uh, into Adaptive. Uh, so we would then we would then import organizational structure. Uh, we would choose update uh, unless we were we were adding new um, uh, new levels. Uh, but if we're just changing the existing, uh, we would just choose an update. We would bring the file in, and the only thing we would we would be changing would be whether those were sales or service. Uh, and that's a quick and easy way to do it in bulk. If you're just doing uh, one or two, it's it's quite easy to do it. Uh, and save them, but if you're doing it in bulk, it's much easier to use the uh, the export and import function.